Here, I've got my hands on a Roland MKS-80, live and direct from the middle of the 1980s. And what is it? Well, it's not any old Jupiter, it's a Super Jupiter. And it's all squished into this 2U 19-inch rack unit. And this was used by just about everyone in the 80s. We've got a bit of Madonna playing in the background, and tracks like this had the Super Jupiter littered all over them. It gives you access to all those Jupiter sounds, but in a much smaller package. It might only be 2U high, but it's very deep and rather heavy, weighing in at an impressive eight kilograms. And that's because we've got a fair amount under the hood. We've got eight voices on two boards. This is the second of the revisions to hit the market. The first was called the Rev4, and this is the Rev5. No idea what happened to Rev1, 2 or 3. And this one has the IR3R05 filter chip in it, like the JX8P, whereas the Rev4 had the IR3109 as used in the Jupiter 8, 6 and Juno 60. And by most accounts, there's not really much difference sonically between the two versions, but some people do prefer one over the other. And it seems to be equally split from what I can tell between the Rev4 and the Rev5. And of course, compared to the keyboard Jupiters, this has the addition of full MIDI control, which was necessary for them to offer the optional MPG-80 programmer. Because of course, this was made in the mid 80s when presets were king and people didn't tend to have a little fiddle mid song like we all love to do these days. So just like Roland's other noblest 80s classics, the Alpha Junos, the JX3P, the JX8P and the D50, the original had an optional extra controller. And sitting on top of this one, I have the latest version of Retroactive's MPG-8X, which is their replacement and upgrade on the original MPG-80. It's got a lot more going on than the original, and I'll look into that in some more detail in a minute, but this latest version is a little more pleasing to the eye than the original and sticks with the MKS-80 blue colouring. You may have seen older versions, which is a bit more colourful than this one. And taking a look at the front panel, if you're familiar with Jupiters, if you've either played the Jupiter 6 or Jupiter 8, or you've got any of the software versions, Autoria does one, Roland Cloud does one, and Cherry Audio do the Jupiter 6, you'll recognise the layout immediately. Two VCOs, um, a single level between them. We've got cross mod and we've got sync. We've also got two ADSR envelopes. We've got a low pass resonant filter. We've got very similar looking modulation options like envelope two and LFO for the VCA. We've got key follow LFO or envelope for the VCF. We've got key follow on envelope one and envelope two. You have that on the Jupiter 6, but you just have a switch on the Jupiter 8. So it's definitely a Jupiter, but is it a Jupiter 8 or an enhanced Jupiter 8 in a box? Well, sort of, but also definitely not, because it's definitely not a Jupiter 8 because it doesn't have the discrete oscillators. As we saw inside earlier, this is all chips. And then the Jupiters themselves are all different. The 6 isn't the same as the 8. And just to show you some of the differences here and why um, the Super Jupiter is a Super Jupiter, it's an, in well, as people say, it's an enhanced version of the Jupiter 8. I'd say it's an enhanced version of the Jupiters rather than a Jupiter 8 in a box. It's a bit like a Jupiter 7, some people say. Cross between a Jupiter 6 and a Jupiter 8. For example, on the Jupiter 6, you could select multiple waveforms. Um, on a single oscillator, on this you can't, they're discrete. That's probably got a lot to do with the interface actually on the machine itself. If you had those options, you'd be flicking through menus to get all the different options available with four different oscillators. What's that about 16 different options perhaps? If you look at things like the four or five oscillator shapes and then a sign and a square and a sign and a saw and a sign and a square and a saw, etc., etc. So I imagine this doesn't have that ability because of the way it's set up at the full panel. Other things on the VCOs, we've got a sign on the Jupiter 8. We don't have a sign on this. So you can see as we go through it, the slight variations on all sorts of things. Envelope 1 on the Jupiter 6 has an inverse function on it, whereas on this, we can inverse the modulation on the oscillators separately. So we could have a positive modulation on oscillator 1 and a negative on oscillator 2. Let's just do that, actually, because that's quite fun. So if we put them both on a sawtooth, put them both on the same tuning, Uh, let's modulate oscillator one and oscillator two with the LFO. So we put the LFO 
and we'll modulate one normally and one inverse. Quite a cool, almost super sore effect that, isn't it? You can't do that on the six or the eight. So yeah, it's not a seven because it's got more, but I wouldn't call it a Jupiter 10, for example, because it hasn't got 10 voices. So Super Jupiter, I think, is quite an apt name for it. Other things we've got on this that we don't have on the others is aftertouch and velocity. So this is the aftertouch section here. Let's just put it onto a standard patch. So pressing the big central knob down gives us the shift functions and hitting this key here gives us a standard two sawtooth initial patch. So I'll just bring down the LPF and then modulate that with aftertouch. We've also got a second LFO here, like you've got on the Jupiter 6, but you don't have on the Jupiter 8. On the Jupiter 6, you just have to push a button to access that second LFO. Also, another pretty cool thing this has got is you've got attack dynamics. So let's put the attack dynamics on envelope two, and this will um, reduce the attack um, depending on how hard you hit the keys. So, so let's put a long attack on. Cool. Long attack, short attack. So for playing, this is really quite an expressive thing. And we've got all the usual things you might expect. We've got dual, we've got split mode, split one and split two. Split one does it via the keyboard, and split two will separate the MIDI channels. And then we've got hole. So if we go to dual, for example, split. If we press shift and split point, we can change that. So let's throw it up an octave. And then hole. When we're on hole, we edit the upper patch. We can't edit the lower patch because we've not got one effectively. But if we're on dual, we can change which ones we can edit. This is exactly like you do on the Jupiter 6 and the Jupiter 8. Got solo, poly, and unison. We know what they do. Solo. Different poly modes. Poly 1 and poly 2. So poly 1 seems to overlap so it's picking new oscillators for the new notes whereas on poly 2 it acts a bit like solo so it's picking the same oscillators over and over which is really good for these chord type things because they don't overlap then we've got different unison modes as well unison detune so in unison one, all eight notes are playing, or all eight voices are playing. In unison two, all eight voices, or all four if you're in split mode, or dual mode. So now we're getting four voices per key, three voices a key. So it spreads it out, so you can still do unison, big detune things, but you've got chords you can play as well. Let's put that into poly. So, big difference there, quite cool. I'm trying to think what else we've got on the MKS-80 that you don't get on the other Jupiters. You know, why it's an enhanced Jupiter. We can sync 1 to 2 and 2 to 1 but we can't do the trick that you can do on the Jupiter 6 where you can sync them both together and do all sorts of crazy stuff. But I think that might be about it, except um, we've got the upper and low balance here, and on the back, we have got two outputs, an upper and a lower output, which you don't have on the Jupiter 6, which is a bizarre thing. Um, but yeah, one thing obviously you don't get on this that you get on the others is the arpeggiator. So Jupiter 6 has got the two arpeggiators. You can have an arpeggiator on the lower and another one on the upper and do all sorts of mad stuff. That's its special trick. Uh, this can't do that. Well, it can't do any arpeggiating and it hasn't got anything like an internal sequencer. So that's what the MKS-80 Super Jupiter can do. And I'm showing you that using the retroactive because otherwise 
you just it's really hard to understand because the front panel is that typical 80s front panel where there's nothing really going on on it so i'll show you that now just to show you why if you get um, an mks80 you need to get yourself a controller more were sold without the um mpg80 without the roland's controller so you're more likely to find one that doesn't have a controller and if you get one you sort of need a controller which is why retroactive have brought this out and i wouldn't get the super jupiter without one so here we've got the front panel and you can see it's very 80s there's very little happening on here and the eagle eye of you will notice i've changed this screen since i made those slider shots for the intro that's because you couldn't really see what was happening on this so this looks a lot nicer Anyway, we've got patches and tones. Each patch contains two tones. So we're on patch 17 here. If we go into the tone, we've got number 66 and number 77. So we've got 66 and 77 in internal 17. So that's the patch. And they're the tones that are held inside it. So to edit the patch, what have we got here? Let's have a listen. Let's go on to something else. And then go into the tones and then look at what tones we've got in there. So it's just tone 15, so that's a whole patch. And we edit everything using these little buttons here. So in the tone, we go through to edit everything that you saw on that front panel bit by bit, which is why you can see if you've got one of these, you need to get yourself a controller. And then on the upper patch, or we go to another patch. Actually, let's just look at the parameters on the patches. So the patches contain things like the dual mode, um, split points, balance, all the sort of stuff that's related to the two patches that are in there. So that's it, really. Um, we can save and load to and from memory. We can save to the cartridge or we can save via MIDI using a controller you save via MIDI. We've got MIDI function one, two, and three. Three sends system exclusive. So if you have a controller, you need to put it on number three. Then we've got the volume, the main volume, and the dynamic sensitivity. The dynamic sensitivity, I think, is the only knob that you don't really have access to from the controller. And this is effectively, is it velocity sensitive or not? So if we play something, turn this down. It's not velocity sensitive. It is now. Let's just put some aftertouch on that, see if it works with aftertouch. So this dynamic sensitivity is just for the velocity, but I don't think there's any way of accessing that um, from the controller. Other than that, every single thing you do is via the controller. So let's take a bit of a closer look at the controller now and show you all the little tricks it's got on top of being uh, an MPG. 80 it's also an mpg 80 x basically because it does extra stuff if you've ever seen any other retroactive controller demo or indeed if you've used one you'll know they've got lots of extra bits that the standard controllers never had we've got things like onboard memory so we can save patches tones, setups and assigns assigns or macros so on each of these macros if you go to the assign mode there we've got one two three four five different destinations we can assign this slider and this slider too then you can then you can save that assigned setup here then you've got the box setup as well i suppose which is like the midi settings and the like we can have two units controlled from this one unit here so we've got unit one and unit two as well as lower and upper for each of the patches so we flick through the menus using these buttons here we've got a chord mode as well let's just show you that let's go to the chord mode chord mode let's put it on let's put a chord on um shift and play the notes so <laughs> all the things we've got a patch generator this is pure genius Hit enter. So it's generating a bass tone now. Sounds like a bass to me. Enter the down, generate another one. <laughs> so we've got lots of different categories of things we can create to do um, some brass, enter. 
Cool. Try another one. Try another. Let's actually let's go to bells and mallets. It's great, this, isn't it? I should do a Starsky sound bank and just base them all on what this produces. Yeah, it's sort of sort of um uh dodgy analog piano. Definitely an organ. Try another one. Yeah, it's great. I love this thing. That's just the perfect Jupiter string, isn't it? Great. Oh, sync sounds as well. Here we go. This also gives you, uh, you saw earlier actually with a shift and that button there gives you um, two sawtooths or two squares. We've also got sync as well. Where's sync? So you can jump straight. If you want to make your own patches, it's really easy to jump into making your own patches. Everything that you do on the front panel, if we go back into main, you can see reflected on the front panel. And in fact, that's all reflected on the main screen on the MKS-80. Just get my phone out because I've run out of cameras. But if I modulate stuff up there, you can see that's changing on that. And it's also changing graphically on that. But you don't need to look at this anymore once you've got this. As I said earlier, I think this is the only thing that you need to use it for. And of course, if you want to save stuff to the memory on the card, they all come with the card, by the way. It's part of the standard package. It's cool, isn't it? So in this, I've saved a load of patches myself. Got three banks for patches. Got three banks for tones. We've got up to how many is it? If we press shift and turn, we jump through the values. 64 setups. Setup being all the stuff that you've got on the unit, like the MIDI settings, two unit settings, all that sort of stuff. The patch includes all these buttons at the bottom. Uh, the tone is obviously the sliders and stuff. So you can save separate tones and in the patches, you save the, the tones from the patch in the patch. So you've got the three banks of tones there, but also in the patch, you've got three banks of 64, which each include two tones. That makes sense, but just means that you're not losing stuff when you're um, editing things. Uh, and then the assign, we've got two assigned. So we've got one set up at the minute. What's it doing? So that sounds like it's the filter, the resonance, and the rate and the amount of LFO1. Let's go in and check it out. So yeah, VCF resonance, LFO rate, VCF, LFO, and the VCF frequency. So one, two, three, four sliders, and you set a minimum and a maximum for each of them. These are absolute values. These aren't um, relative to where the slider is initially. So what have we got? Let's, let's increase the LFO rate, shall we? So LFO rate, we'll take this to a maximum of... It'll be 27. And you can see there, this is modulating unit one, which is the only one I've got, the upper, and it's not modulating unit two at all at the minute. And you set different MIDI settings for them with the MIDI menu. So unit two. So you can set different input and output settings and so turn that off. We can change the different MIDI channels for each of the units. It says three and four and one and two and two and three because the upper and the lower on the unit itself are split to um, main MIDI channel plus one for the extra. So the lower is at one and the upper is at two. If you set it at two, it's two and three. If you set it at three, it's three and four. If that makes any sense. And then we can receive and send whole banks or individual patches. And here we've got lots of shortcuts as well. Like I showed you some earlier with the different um, initial patches. Shift plus unit one auto tunes them. 
Shift plus MIDI is MIDI panic. Shift plus assign plays all your signs. You get the idea. I'm not going to go through all of them, but there's lots of quick things you can do on it as well. One that's worth noting because it's part of the MKS 80s sound um, generating architecture is this envelope generator we set on or off. Again, I don't think you've got that on the other Jupiters. <laughs> envelope, reset, go back to the main page, it's not resetting back to zero. Whereas if we have it on, So yeah, it just gives you different flavors, really. Here I'm using the chord mode on the key step, just using whatever chord came up first, really. Bit of aftertouch. We hear this glide there. I've got it on poly 2 for the glide, because it uses the same oscillators. You get a nice smooth glide. In fact, in the MKS-80 manual, it says that Poly 2 is really to do glide with chords. Put it onto Poly 1. So it gives some nice effects. Um, actually, it's quite nice and ambient now. I do like it. Um, let's put a bit of reverb on there. That's all very lovely, actually, isn't it? I like that. Uh, okay, let's have a little play with that high pass as well. So we do get a nice band pass effect there. Jupiter 6 obviously has high pass, or band pass, or low pass, whereas the Jupiter 8 has the same as this, a high pass and a low pass. Let's add a little resonance. And that doesn't seem to lose much volume or bass, if any at all, does it? You can hear Stefan in there. I 
And I think that's stepping rather than pulling out the resonant frequencies. Don't get that with the LFO though. And just sticking with this filter for a minute. So this is the same filter chip as the JX-AP, not the same as the Jupiter 8, the Jupiter 6, or the 106. And you don't get self-oscillation, but you don't get it on the Jupiter 6 or the Jupiter 8 either. Let's take the envelope off. Slightly more Jupiter 6, though. I actually thought it was broken when I first got it, because people said they self-oscillate. Because they do that, you can hear things happening, but... It's not. Because you can hear the filter self-oscillating, but it won't do it without an input. We put these onto squares or pulses. Pulse width to zero. You don't get anything. And again, that's the same as on the Jupiter 6. And it's the same as the Jupiter 8 as well. As far as I know, on my System 8, that's got the Jupiter 8 on it. It doesn't do that either. It's the same as this. Let's have a listen to some other tones of mage, shall we? Let's just... We've heard this song before, Robots Sing. Uh, load, load. Turn that off. I got pulled up for calling that Robot Rock by Daft Punk on a previous video, so it's released The Beast by Breakwater, of course, the original. LFO Sing. Sync with LFO. Nice that isn't it? All oh, they're all nice sounds. Did make them myself like so. Um blow me on trumpet a little. That's based on a sound from the prophet called It's a Prophet. Prophet Thrive, that is. Sounds like it. Or as near as you're gonna get with a Jupiter. Brass one. I think that's what you have to do with a brass sound, isn't it? Trumpet, I'm not quite so convinced with that one myself. They do happen late at night. Lead sounds, let's put a little. Slow pad. <laughs> what am I doing there? Just sounds nice, doesn't it? It sounds like a Jupiter, because it is. Let's 
Let's look at some other patches. Patch Bank 2. Oh, Madonna Bass. <laughs> Love this song. Something like that. Anyway, that's trying to be into the groove by Madonna. That was used, or well, this was used, all over that track. So, yeah, I was creating a little version of that. Rezo 4 from it. Nice, very Juno-esque. A little bell. All these sounds took seconds to create. And the string, what's the string? That was it. Something like that. So yeah, been creating a little little tempo of that, which I'll probably have finished by the time I make this video. And really was doing that to see you know, to get a flavour of its sounds. Does it sound, does it have that 80s vibe? And 100% it absolutely does. So I think I've just about covered everything there. Um, I'm trying to think of anything that's outstanding that I might have missed. We've looked at the differences between this, the Jupiter 6 and the Jupiter 8. I might actually put this up against uh, my Jupiter 6 just to really see the differences in those filters actually, because it's one of those points of contention with people, isn't it? Uh, the two cams, it's quite funny really. Um, people do get quite heated about these things. Um, the reason why I got the five actually was because I do have the Jupiter 6. Uh, so I thought getting the one that doesn't have the same chip in it was a good idea, it's for a different flavor, but gotta say it does sound very similar. But yeah, definitely if you're gonna get an MKS-80, get yourself a controller. There's less, um, as I said earlier, there's less MPG. 80s than there are MKS 80s and nowadays people like to twiddle and the MKS 80 plus programmer is a lot lot cheaper than either the Jupiter 6 or the Jupiter 8 and takes up a lot less space but you do lose the arpeggiator anyway I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere if it was please do subscribe ring the bell join me over on Patreon this channel is funded by affiliate links YouTube ads and my wonderful patrons who for less than the price of a dodgy lukewarm nasty coffee a month get access to patches samples uh, tutorials and other goodies and also do take a look at my starcycar.com website if you don't want to become a patron you can pay for the bits and bobs as patches the samples and all sorts of free bits on there as well but like i always say please do pick up some of the paid things because it really does help to support what i do here anyway thanks very much for staying to the very end and i will see you next time <laughs>